Hi everybody, it's Christina from Card Making Magic. Do you sometimes wish that you could think of more things to do with your dies? I know I do. Well on this occasion I've been experimenting and I've created this really pretty vase that I've added some flowers to to decorate my shelves. Now I'm going to take the flowers out and I'm going to show you the vase. So there's the vase and it's created with die cuts and I've painted it blue and then dry brushed it in gold and I think that's really pretty to stand on my shelves. So in this video I'm going to show you bit by bit how I have created this vase. So the die set that I've used is the Pentagon Bauble Easel Set and for the vase that I've just shown you I've used die number four. So we'll start with the patterned one, that's number one, number two, number three, number four and the largest one is the one that completes the whole easel for you and we're not using that. So for the vase that I've just shown you I've used die number four but for the vase that I'm going today to do today I'm going to use die number three and of course you can make an even smaller vase by using the next die down. So for my vase I've cut ten of the shapes for the outer edges of the vase and I've cut two extra ones and they will create the bottom to the vase and I've doubled, it, doubled them up just for a little bit of extra strength. So let's get sticking these together. Now to add these together you're going to need some kind of tape. So there's duct tape, masking tape or cellar tape and I'm going to use cellar tape because for some reason my masking tape is not sticking the edges together so what we're going to do is place two of them together like so and then we're going to masking tape or cellar tape those together to create one piece so we need to make sure that the edges stay level And we'll glue those together. We'll masking tape, cellar tape those together. And now we can trim off the edges. And when you open it out, make sure you can press that down and that the edges are flush together. And then you're going to repeat the process with the next one. You're going to glue them together so you can do them whichever way is easier for you. need to make sure that they will bend and make sure that they're well stuck together. Okay so we'll open that out, we'll keep that the right way around and we'll do another one along here. So you need to do five pieces that are fastened together. So once you have these five pieces all fastened together and they're all nice and neat and tidy Keep it with the sellotape facing you and you're going to take the next piece and you're going to place the point into that point and then holding them very carefully you're going to repeat the process and put more sellotape around this edge. So once you have that piece taped together you're going to bring this piece up and you're going to add the sellotape along there. And then you're going to repeat that process with the next one. So you're going to put the point in there, you're going to adjoin these two pieces, and then those two pieces, and then the two side pieces.
once you've got the bottom and the side pieces stuck in and I must admit it gets a little bit awkward as you get further around you're going to sellotape these last two pieces here together we'll turn it this way where it's easier and we're going to sellotape these together And then we're going to finish off by fastening in these two pieces and then those two together. Now once we've done that we've more or less got the shape that we need so the last thing to do is fasten in this other piece that will create the bottom for you and we'll glue these two pieces together and make it extra strong. So the next thing we need to do to secure the top is take some of these coffee stirrers and I'm going to take the rounded edge off one side and then I'm going to measure it along here and I'm going to cut that into a slant on the other side and then with some glue I'm going to glue those along the top edges of all the the box all the, the sides and that's going to keep the shape to the top of your box. So we'll do the same on this one. Now that just stops it from sagging when you start to add your glue and paper layer. Now I've just used little paper grips to keep my wood in place and I'm going to leave that now to just dry. So once your wooden strips are dry around the edge of your box, take your clips off and we'll move on to the next part. So for this now you need strips of paper. You can use magazines, newspaper, toilet roll, kitchen roll, tissue paper, in fact any kind of soft paper that you've got and then into a small jar you're going to put some glue and that's a really cheap glue that you can find and you're going to mix it with a little bit of water. So there's my glue mixed with some water and it's very runny and what I'm going to do now is place some glue onto my box and I'm going to stick these pieces of paper all over it and I'm going to repeat this until the the box is covered in the paper make sure that all your ends are stuck down and you can overlap them and you're going to make sure that you put some of them over the edge of your wooden sticks now when you get to the bends in the box you may need to snip that with a little pair of scissors and then just bring it down individually and that way it will follow the contours of your box. So once you've got all your box covered with glue and paper I like to stuff the inside of it with a plastic bag just to make sure that it keeps its shape. And we're going to set that on one side now just to dry. Now once your paper's dry it goes very hard but just to strengthen it some more I'm adding a second coat of my paper.
So now that my box is really hard and dry, I've kept the plastic inside, the plastic bag inside, just to keep the shape. And now I'm going to use some Plaster of Paris bandage to coat the outside. So I've cut this into smaller pieces and I need some water and a small brush just to apply this to my vase. So you need to take your little Plaster of Paris pieces and you're going to add them to your card. Now you need to spread the plaster around and then you need to just make sure that that's inside and do that so that it goes smooth on your on your vase. So we'll get as much on as we can and we're going to cover it all. Now if you wish you can put this on first and then with some water on your brush you can just smooth that in place whichever way suits you the best. So once you've added your last piece, make sure that you go all over it, again with your wet brush, just to smooth out all the, the edges, all the bandage looking holes in it, and you've got as nice and smooth a finish to your Plaster of Paris bandage as you can get. And then you need to pop that on one side and again leave it to dry overnight and when you come back to it tomorrow it will be really really hard. So it's a few days later now and this is completely dry and quite hard. So what I'm going to do now is just take some fine sandpaper and very lightly I'm going to just rub over the outside edges not to make it completely smooth but just to smooth it out a little bit and then once you've done that you're going to take some white paint and you're going to paint the outside so once you've done that and it's dry you can give it another coat if you wish see what it looks like when it dries but if you wanted to do the inside as well because at the moment that just looks quite ugly put some white paint into your your dish and mix a little bit of water so with it. So once you have that mixed, pour it into your, your vase. Make sure you get all the paint out. And then all you're going to do is just swill it around. And you're going to make sure that it touches all the sides. And if you don't have enough, then you can always mix up some more. But once that's all covered, your vase inside will be nice and white and will match the outside. So once you've got all the outside and the inside covered in your white paint, you've got it. You now have to leave that on one side to dry. But I thought it would be fun while I was waiting to create some more. Now these haven't been painted yet, but I'm going to do that shortly. So I've done one in the larger size, this is the medium sized one, and I've done one in the smaller size. So we now have three matching vases that will all be ready to decorate once this is dry. So now while the inside and outside of my vase has been drying, I've taken the filigree piece to the die set and the outer one that cuts the edge and I have cut these both twice and then I've glued two together to make a really strong um, panel and then with some glue I'm just going to glue all these to the side of my vase so you need a strong glue just to pop these in place And we're going to pop these along here. And we're going to continue all the way around the vase, giving them time to stick on there and to create the pattern. So 
that's one of my vases completed and I've just added pearls into the centre of the die cuts. It's all dry and clean and ready for adding some florist foam to the centre and then adding a, an arrangement of flowers in the top. So to create that one I've used the um, Pentagon Bauble Easel and I've just used pieces from the die. Now for the smaller one I've created my border from this die and this is the single sided border die and for this one I'm just going to add this border around the top and the bottom of my vase. So I'll glue that in place and then I'll come back and show you what I've done. So once I have the border stuck on I'm just taking some small and medium sized pearls and I'm just going to add these onto the border just to dress it up a little bit more and then we have two vases created with black and white. Now let's see what we can do with the third vase. Now for the last vase all I've done is taken different sized circle dies and I've added them together and I'm creating just frames that will sit on this vase just to give it a more modern look and then you'll have three vases that all blend together in the black and white theme that you can add your flowers to. But as a finishing touch to these I'm going to take them outside and I'm going to spray them with a clear spray and that will give them all a nice shine. So I have to do that outside and once I've done it I'll bring them back and show you. Now all these vases have now been sprayed with two coats of clear finish and allowed to dry and there we have three very different vases for you to add your flowers to. Now they're not waterproof so if you're going to put florist oasis in there you must use the dry kind and artificial flowers. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have please join me on the next one. And why not subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so that you'll never miss a video when I upload one. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.